Now, I was only saying last night how crucial the nuclear energy debate is for this country. All of modern civilization and all of the prosperity in a great country like ours is built on abundant, reliable and affordable energy. It's the foundation and, of course, the essential element of our whole economy. So what debate could be more important than that? Well, on the taxpayer-funded public broadcaster last night, I saw something that I could hardly believe. Even a long-standing critic of the ABC like me couldn't quite comprehend what went to air and what was supposed to be an interview about the Coalition's plan for domestic nuclear energy. Have a look at how it started. Well, here he is. Ted O'Brien is the Shadow Minister for Climate Change and Energy. Welcome to the program. Thanks very much, Sarah. So how many uh, nuclear powered... How many nuclear power stations would the Coalition build and how long would it take to build them? So the advice we've received from the best experts in the world is that small modular reactors could be constructed between about three to five years, large reactors six to 12 years. I'm just going to stop course, you. I'm just going to... I know oh, it's jumping right. in very quickly, but forgive me because... No, that's uh, OK. We've spoken to a lot of experts and there's a lot of expertise on the table from the CSIRO over a, a number of years and, and other groups. Yeah, Ted O'Brien got 15 seconds into his first answer before Sarah Ferguson interrupted him. 15 seconds before she contested how long it would take to build a nuclear plant, even though the UAE has just built one in less than 12 years, despite the construction setback of the pandemic. O'Brien eventually got another go. So let me unpack this. Firstly, just to finish my earlier response, um, construction, three to five SMRs. Um, and that's small three, modular reactors. Three to five years for small modular reactors. Mm -hmm six to 12 years for large reactors. And as I was about to say, uh, that is the advice of ANSTO. That is the advice of the Albanese government's nuclear agency. Not from a standing start. So let's... No, construct, con construction, mm. right? So let's... And, well... so, and so before construction, you're mm. right, um, you do need to stand up a regulator yes. and so, so forth. I'm just going to ask you a question so, so now. Can I, answer, can I answer that question? Let me just say this one thing, because I course. think this is very important for the audience. And forgive me for interrupting no, there, okay. but this is important. This is a complex subject. It's an extremely serious subject, given the nature of our commitments to reduce our emissions. Being straightforward about the detail and not trying to snow people seems to be incredibly important. So why would you start off by saying, not here, but out there in... Uh, making public statements that you can do it in under 10 years when you know you can't. Uh, that's not true, Sarah, with all due respect. Extraordinary, isn't it? Ferguson is then accusing the Shadow Minister of lying about his own nuclear policy. Apparently only the ABC is interested in objective facts. Or could that be the other way round? Look what happens when O'Brien dares to criticise Labor's Climate and Energy Minister Chris Bowen. One-liners is not the way you run Australia's energy system. Right now, we are in a mess because we have somebody with one-liners trying to run the well, system. To be, so, to, be so, to be fair to him, he, he, he was talking about a whole series of things. That was the thing no, that he was says specific. at the end. That was specific to nuclear, Sarah. Well, the ABC running protection for Labor's Climate Minister. But it's not just Bowen. Ferguson also seems to... She keeps defending the, the whole renewables push. Again, she intervened when O'Brien was focusing on how the government has made electricity too expensive and unreliable. We have a government right now who is refusing to have a mature debate. All right, I mean, well, let's, we have, let's we have paying, it. Let's have it. So, so let's we have are, it. But, but let me make this point. Yeah. Australians right now are paying among the highest energy prices in the world. We so already have blackouts, I, it's getting worse, I, and I, our, our renewables th our target is failing. I have and we brought have you in here to talk about nuclear energy, so let's not waste time talking about the, well, the, the it, government for the moment. No, I'm going to stop you that, there, because I want the to problem. talk about... I, I will now shift to nuclear, yes. but to make the point, that is the problem we mm. need to solve. Yeah, it's also a problem the ABC and Ferguson seem intent on ignoring. The host soon got back to how long a nuclear power plant might take to bring online. If you look at the most recent entrant in the civil nuclear program globally, it's the UAE. 
and um, they to hosted be, to COP. Be, to be clear to the audience, just just let's make it clear to the audience, we're talking about a country that is partially a command economy. So it's not a country like Australia. It's not a country where people can object to a nuclear reactor in their constituency. So just to be clear, UAE is not comparable to Australia. So it can set up its regu regulatory framework. And in the UAE, even there, even in an autocracy, it took four years. So I want to come back to the question I asked and, you. And, and can, I finish, it, can I finish my I just point, want though, to, because I just, you just interrupted me, Sarah, on it, my point, and you finished a different point on the same subject. I think you hadn't answered the so, first so question. So the, the, the UAE, yes. they had the most recent entrant. Indeed. Yeah, now, I know this is pretty frustrating to watch, but this is important, isn't it? You and I, all taxpayers, we give the ABC more than a billion dollars a year, and they're supposed to illuminate debates inform the population. I mean, only one of the people in this interview is supposed to be a political advocate, and it's not Ferguson. My question was, if, in terms of a large-scale nuclear reactor, and we're still parking the small ones, because, as you well know, the economics of small modular reactors have suffered uh, tremendous setbacks in recent years, including the recent collapse of one of the most promising ones. We are but looking stay... at SMRs and large, to be very yes, so clear, my... and, and this I is... disagree with that point, but we can come back to it Let's if you like. Let's just come back to that question. So if you could get one nuclear reactor up in 2040, and that's not a given in the time frames that we've seen around the world, bearing in mind the United States, 19 years with a fully-fledged industry already in existence. The Australian government's is agency it... disagrees with you and multiple other experts the, around the world disagree. This is the question. Anthony Albanese agrees this is the question. so does Chris Bowen. Is it your policy with uncertainty, at least we can agree, that there is no certainty over the operational date of a large-scale nuclear reactor being built in a country with no existing nuclear reactor uh, business in its, in its landscape. Do you... The question was, is it your policy to keep coal-fired power stations running longer? After all of that advocacy, finally, at the end of it, a reasonable question. But Ferguson again gets her hackles up and intervenes when O'Brien explains that Labor's doing the same with coal because of its renewables bungling. The Victorian Labor government has done two deals behind closed doors, no transparency of those deals, to keep coal in the system. Same as WA, right, and you wait till New South Wales Labor... I want to come back to what you're Labor, doing. I want to, I want New to come South back Wales to what Labor you're on doing. on the Araring coal-fired power state, they're negotiating. Mm. So um, that's what Labor's doing right now. Uh, Chris Bowen and Anthony Albanese don't even want to talk about it. That's let's, the truth, because their renewables plan is failing. Let's come back to what you're doing, because uh, I, I've asked you a couple of times if, uh, what your view is on, on the future mix. Well, of course, the Coalition can't be doing anything at the moment. Labor is running the energy system. The opposition's proposing a way to do it better. Still, Ferguson then switched tack to one of the world's richest men and a nuclear advocate, Bill Gates, who had told her that nuclear is not Australia's best option. So, I Bill Gates, it, a successful uh, investor in nuclear energy, says it is, makes no sense for Australia in this, in this moment to invest in nuclear energy when it has an abundance of solar and wind. So, to come back to my question... As an investor, as an what investor, is it that, that is his right. I'm not going to question what yes, he wishes to do with his money. He's Sarah. criticising... The, he is saying it is not a good decision, it's not a wise decision for Australia to invest in nuclear energy at this stage. Now, never mind that Gates agrees nuclear energy is essential globally to get to net zero. And funny how Ferguson and the ABC never seem to question the timing and the cost of building out renewables. But cost has become a big focus of their nuclear criticism, even if they don't properly comprehend it. So let we me... have to leverage our comparative advantage and get the mix right. Let Sarah. me just ask it's you. This, let me just ask you this quickly because we do have to. We do have to wrap up. But um, just on the question of mm -hmm. two questions on the on the question of cost. Mm -hmm. So. As we know, at the moment, nuclear is still the most expensive new build electricity generation in the world, particularly compared to renewables. Why choose if, the if, most if, expensive if you're an investor. technology when we have access to the cheapest? If you are an investor, I'm sure it is more expensive so for the capex. But what, what counts, Sarah, is not the developer or the investor. 
It is the consumer. And this is where... Well, you, but this if you is take where out, Labor, I'm sorry, I'm, no, 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 This no, is where no, Labor gets it wrong. You put I'm the consumer have to interrupt you there at the because centre. You're making an argument that says that it's not attractive for investors. That means that no, the government... No, I didn't make that argument. Well, I, I, I said it's a higher capex. Higher capital yes, expense. Yes. Didn't say it's it's unattractive. So you're not going to have to fill the gap. A higher capex with but my point... subsidies. Look, this really isn't an interview at all, is it? It's not even an informed debate. It's just a matter of throwing Labor's talking points uh, incessantly at the guest. Nuclear gets prices down. Canada, nuclear gets prices down. United States, nuclear gets prices down. UK, nuclear gets prices down. But here we are in Australia and we have the Australian Labor Party that's not been interested in this debate suddenly now becoming experts just, in disagreeing just, just with their before, own agency. Just before we close, that doesn't I'm make just going to have to make Sarah. a point about the United Kingdom because you are ignoring the fact that the current nuclear program in the, in the United Kingdom is in terrible trouble with the French nuclear program at Hinkley going over cost. So I'm, I'm going to finish there. We have to wrap it up, but we've that's clearly fine. got a lot more to and talk about. And we're going to talk about the UAE next time, on time, on budget. And uh, with, within just over a decade. How and, good is that? And an autocracy. Thank you very much Thank indeed very for much, joining Sarah. us. Thank you. Yeah, of course, Ferguson had to get the last word in without, of course, mentioning that despite the cost overruns at that Hinkley Sea project in the UK, that country is ramping up nuclear power. I wonder why. I'm certain it's not because Great Britain wants to send itself broke. That interview went for 14 minutes, by the way, and Ferguson was either speaking or speaking over her guest for seven minutes of it, exactly half of the time. I guess that's what the ABC calls equal time. Let's compare this treatment to the last time Ferguson interviewed Chris Bowen. I don't doubt that this is a, a respectful engagement, but you know what happens at COP. It gets more and more tense as the days go on. That question is going to be put to you at some point, what Australia's plans are with regards to its fossil fuel projects. And Australia's plans are to become a renewable energy superpower, Sarah. We wish you, uh, we wish you luck for what lies ahead. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Yeah, different tone, different style, accepting nonsensical terms like renewable energy superpower. And it was actually an interview. Ferguson asked questions and she let him answer. Whereas the Coalition's O'Brien only spoke for 50% of the airtime and was constantly and repeatedly interrupted, as you saw, Labor's Bowen was interrupted once and spoke for 75% of the time. Now, the point here is not just that the ABC and Ferguson are so ideologically biased, pro-climate alarmism, pro-renewables, anti-nuclear and always favouring the green left politically. The crucial point is that the ABC is not just in breach of its charter, it's actually doing the opposite of what it's supposed to do, the opposite of what it's funded to do. Instead of encouraging intelligent, open and educational debate, here's the ABC deliberately trying to distort and shut down a crucial national debate. Instead of being the publicly funded platform for useful discussion of nationally important issues, on climate and energy and specifically nuclear, the ABC is intent on being an ideological and close-minded influence. In some areas of public debate, the ABC is a cancer rather than a cure. And that's not an appropriate use of our tax dollars.